Welcome to our recap from 1320 to 1329. If you have not been following along in the Decades Challenge and you want to know what's been happening, stop right now and go to the recaps from 1300. So there are two recaps before this. If you are all caught up, then let's just continue with 1320 to 1329. So we kicked off 1320 with new family pictures. I loved this picture having everybody together. What I didn't like was that I was still having the issues with getting their bodies correct. And so some of them looked really good and some of them were really too close up and other weirdness. So anyway, that's all fixed by 1330. So just be patient if it annoys you as much as it annoys me in 1320. Anyway, other things that happened this year is all of our teens, Mary, Michael, and Cooper, well, Mary's already moved out. Michael and Cooper will age up and Cooper moves out and Michael gets married and moves out. So we have great things happening this year in 1320. We also have sad things happening. Hugh, who is our heir, and his wife Eve have their first baby, and of course I named him Sebastian. Sebastian is my favorite name, and I will name every first heir Sebastian until I get one that stays alive. <laughs> and maybe I'll just do it even if they do live, but Sebastian was born and he died. So I was really sad about it. They were sad about it. Everybody was sad about it. Then at the end of the year, to make everybody smile again, Mary had a baby and her name was Gwendolyn and she lived. So we end 1320 on a really high note. Then we jump in to 1321 where our mom, Grace, ages, ages up to an elder and we roll and discover that she's going to live for only four more years. So we know that we have four years with her, so we are just enjoying our time. We jump over to Mary's house where her son Frey becomes a toddler and he rolls really well. We also go over and visit Michael's house where he has two new cats, shark and dolphin. <laughs> because fish is gonna be passing away and so he got shark and dolphin so that he was not alone and he still had his cats. We also, on our house, added in a fence area over in the garden just to kind of keep the chickens more organized and to start building up our garden area over there. And we close out 1321 with the really great news that Eve had baby Hannah and they both lived. So now we have our first girl Hugh has his first girl and his first baby that lived in 1321. Then we move over to Mary's house at the beginning of 1322 because she is having a baby and we are aging up Gwendolyn. So first, Isabella is born. Such a pretty name, but she dies. Then the good news is that Gwendolyn ages up to a toddler and she lives. So we get some bad roles, but we also get some really good roles. Then back to our main house where our twins, Bernard and Beatrice, both become teenagers and they both rolled really well. We also rolled for Beatrice and Bernard to get married and Beatrice rolled to never get married. So she, when she moves out, will be moving out into the orphanage slash cemetery that we have to take care of the orphans who live there. Then in 1323, in what seems like no time at all, shark and dolphin age up and become adult cats. This is also where I realize that they're not actually related and that shark is a male and dolphin is a female. <laughs> and so that is just foreshadowing for what might happen later. Also this year, we roll for Hugh, our heir, to become an adult, and he does a great job. We also have a lot of people that age up in 1323. So first, we have Ethel, who becomes a child and rolls really well. Hannah becomes a toddler and rolls really well. Daniel becomes a child and rolls well. Adrian becomes an adult. So Mary's husband, Adrian, becomes an adult, and he rolls really well. So... I'm a little worried that things have gone so well in 1323, so I started becoming paranoid that things might happen badly. Anyway, also in this year, Eve, again, practicing her magic, starts another fire. <laughs> it just seems to be a theme with Eve doing magic. Anyway, we end the year of 1323 with 
Beatrice moving out and moving into the orphanage where she is going to help Sister Terry take care of the orphans. Now, moving into 1324, Hugh's wife Eve is pregnant again and she gives birth to John. And so now we have a potential heir. He rolls to live. So at least right now, our heir is a baby. We also head over to Mary's house where her child or her toddler Frey becomes a child and he rolls really well. And then we have Mary, Michael, and Cooper are all becoming young adults and they all roll well. 1323 and 1324 have just been the best years. We end this baby with Mary having baby Kavanaugh who also lives. Then we move into 1325 and our good luck with rolls and our good luck with just happiness in general kind of takes a turn right here. So first of all, I do share what the family tree looks like at the beginning of 1325. That happens at every year that ends in five. So at 1335, we'll also take a look at the family tree. But we look at it, if there is a picture of someone on the family tree, that means they have passed away. If there's not a picture, then they're still living. That was the easiest way for me to keep up with what was going on. So in this year, at the very beginning of 1325, we lose our matriarch, Grace. We knew it was coming. We knew that we only had four years with her, but it just seemed to pass so quickly. Also, Hugh's wife, Eve, ages up to become an adult, and she rolls really well. Then we go over to visit Michael's house because Millie is having a baby. So Millie has baby Leo, their only child, and he dies. It was so sad. We head back to the main house because it's time for John, our heir, to become a toddler. I was so worried about this, but he rolled really well and he was fine. Then, to close out this year, Eve has another boy. His name is Michael, and he rolls really well. Unfortunately, Eve rolled a one, which is the only number you roll if you die in childbirth. So we lose our second generation matriarch right here at the very beginning. So she has three children alive, and two of them are boys. So we have two shots at an heir right now. So we will just see how things go from here. We kick off 1326 with Bernard getting married, and he is going to immediately start trying for a family. We have our Clara age up to be a teenager, and she meets her husband. She actually meets him a little bit early, and the wedding has to be moved up a little bit, if you know what I mean. Also, we went over to Mary's house so that Kavanaugh could grow up to be a toddler, and he did not make it. Also, we go back to our main house. I was so excited that we got our water wheel back, and I was like, great, it just means things are happening around here, and things are picking back up, and baby Hannah, it was time for her. She wasn't a baby. She was a toddler, but it was time for her to become a child, and she dies. So now Hugh, our heir, only has two children, two boys left, John and Michael. And we move into 1327 with Michael becoming a toddler. And he rolled really well. We also celebrated All Souls Day. And what we're going to be doing for that day is we're going to be heading over to the cemetery every year and just having a remembrance day for everybody that we've lost. And so this was kind of the first time I set everything up. And of course, it was raining and things just didn't work exactly the way I wanted them to. But I figured out how to fix that because in the future, we will create groups and now then we can get together with our groups and it works a lot better. But that was our first All Souls Day celebration. Also, in that same day, Clara got married because we had to move the wedding up. And she and Howard, at the end of the year, welcome baby Nathaniel, who rolls really well. Also, Bernard and Olive welcome their first baby, Olivia, but she sadly passes away. So in 1328, we don't have anything going on, no birthdays, nothing. So we decide to spend the time 
playing with the groups. So I create the Miller Men and the Miller Women. And we have a couple of gatherings at our homestead just so the family can hang out with their dad. This is going to be the last year that he's alive. He'll be dying next year. We already know that. And so we're just having a few gatherings where all of his kids are over. They're hanging out. I had some issues figuring out what activities to do in the groups where people were not cooking constantly (laughs) at my house and so anyway we just played with the groups and kind of figured that out in the year 1328 to get us ready for the final year 1329 the last year of this decade we have quite a few birthdays and our dad our patriarch passes away So let's kick it off with Nathaniel. Clara's son, Nathaniel, becomes a toddler and he rolls really well. Then our heir, John, becomes a child and he also rolls really well. So it's looking good that we're going to have at least one heir continue from Hugh's family. Then our Papa Edmund dies and everybody came. Everybody was there. It was actually really sweet. I really liked it. Then... We immediately follow Clara back to her house where she has baby Penelope who rolls well and lives. Back in our main house, we have a couple of birthdays. Daniel becomes a teenager and Daniel and Ethel are the last two children that Edmund and Grace had. And so Daniel is our last boy and he became a teenager. And so next year in 1330, he'll be getting married and moving out or 1331, sometime around there. Then we had Hugh become an adult, and he rolled really well. So our heir is still alive, and even though he has two boys now, he is still alive, and our household is shrinking and shrinking. We do in this year going and visiting Bernard and Beatrice at their houses to age them up, and Beatrice fails her role. So she passes away at the orphanage where she lives, and we will be visiting her grave next year on All Souls Day. That is ends everything from 1320 to 1329. This was the year that we lost our matriarch and patriarch from the very beginning. So it has been really cool watching everything that's happened. They had 19 children and watching those kids age up and have kids of their own and it's just been awesome. So I really, really liked this decade. I think this might have been my favorite decade just because we had more people established. We had a, a wider family, I guess, and just more people in general around the place. So it was very cool. Anyway, I will put the link for the 1330 video right after this. And that's where you can pick up if you want to start watching them year by year. Otherwise, after I finish the 1330s, there will be a recap video for that as well. And if you've missed anything else, there are tons of playlists and links and everything will be below for all of the playlists. I'm trying to make a playlist for every decade so that the playlist won't include, you know, 700 videos, but (laughs) it'll just be the decade videos in the playlist. So that's what we have going on. If anybody has any questions, any suggestions, any comments, anything that you want to talk about, I would love to chat with you down in the comment section below. If you have friends that like to watch the Sim games, especially these historical plays, please share this with them. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will get notified every time a new video comes up. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.